Hey everyone, how's it going? We are back with another Minimum Battles video. For those of you who are new to this series, it's really exciting. We basically see whether we can get through the various Pokemon games with the fewest battles possible. Now, I have a proper rule set here, but in brief, a battle is any time you battle a trainer or a wild Pokemon where you don't run away. So it's kind of like a weird mix between a pacifist run and a low percent run. It's really, really fun. But we did the run in Ruby and Sapphire. I recommend you watch that. Assuming you have or don't care about spoilers, we had the lowest battles ever with just 50 battles. Emerald, I know, is going to be different. It changes quite a lot from Ruby and Sapphire. So much so that we're actually going to make a big, big change at the start of this run. And that is the fact we can actually pick whatever starter we like. If you recall in Ruby and Sapphire, the only starter where minimum battles is possible is Mudkip. Why? Well, just to refresh, there are very, very few Pokemon you can acquire in Ruby and Sapphire that don't require a battle. The only ones being your starter, the Why Not Egg, the cast form, and the fossil. That is it, which is in stark contrast to the previous games we've done. But getting back to the main point, the reason you must choose Mudkip is it is the only Pokemon that can learn the various HM moves that you need to traverse the world. Specifically, Surf, Waterfall, and Dive, all of which are mandatory, and in the case of Dive and Waterfall, cannot be learned by any of the other Pokemon we get. So Mudkip it had to be. As you can tell in Emerald, we obviously are going to have something that can learn these HMs, and thus, we can choose any starter, including Trico or Torchic. Now, I'm pretty sure my first ever playthrough both of Sapphire and of Emerald years later was with Trico, so I was very excited to use it, even though Trico is... eh, it's okay. I mean, definitely Swampert versus Sceptile. Swampert's a lot better. I'm sure Sceptile will be just fine. Anyway, I also have to check my stats, make sure it's a good Trico, because we have very little experience points and we can't EV train. All that would require battles. But obviously, since I'm continuing, this Trico met my expectations. And we can defeat the Zigzagoon, which is Battle 1. And we can defeat Mei, which is Battle 2. Our third battle is on Route 102 against the Youngster. Not a very difficult battle. And after helping Wally find routes, which isn't a battle since it's Wally, not us, we're then gonna get into battle four, catching a Meryl. Wait, hold on, J Rose. I thought you said you couldn't catch any Pokemon. This was supposed to be minimum battles. Well, you're right. And let me explain why we can catch a Meryl, but we're gonna have to go into the future. Well, not that far in the future, but a little bit. Now, you might know in Ruby and Sapphire, we were introduced to double battles. But the way those battles worked in Ruby and Sapphire were essentially to treat both trainers as one, just using two Pokemon. In Emerald, there's a different type of double battle, a tag team battle. Here's one right north of Slateport on Route 110. And it is this battle which is why we're able to catch Meryl. These trainers are both unavoidable, and in this attempt, I only have Trico. So I'm going to defeat her, and right after, the second trainer is going to battle me, which obviously is two battles. However, watch what happens if I come back with my Meryl. Now, they're both still unavoidable, but they battle me together, which is still just one battle. The next Pokemon we would get without catching is Why Not in Laveridge Town, and there are three mandatory, let's call them tag team battles, before then. Thus, as we return back to the present, we're not only able to catch a Pokemon, we actually have to catch a Pokemon, at least before that first tag battle with the Plusle and Minin trainers. And so that leaves a bunch of Pokemon we could catch, anything on Route 101, 102, 103, 104, Petalburg Woods, 116, Granite Cave. There are a lot of Pokemon. And so you might wonder why in the world did I pick Meryl, especially before it was a fairy type? I mean, what does that make sense? Like, why Meryl? 
Well, I'll tell you, there were a couple factors for why Meryl made a lot of sense to me. The first factor is that we needed a Pokemon to learn all the HMs that Trico couldn't. Well, Trico plus Anorith, I guess, since Cast Form and Why Not can't learn any useful HMs. That means we need a Pokemon to learn Surf, Dive, Waterfall, and Strength. There are only a handful of Pokemon that can do that. Two of them, Tentacool and Magikarp, while powerful, are in the slow level up group. And Lotad is also a grass type, and it's in medium slow. Azumarill evolves quickly and levels up fast. And for those reasons, I thought would make the perfect partner for Trico. Obviously, for the most part, we're going to use Trico, but we still need Azumarill to help out here and there. So it's not going to simply be sitting around, but it might not need to get that much use. Anywho, we're going to skip ahead a bit. There's a mandatory battle in the forest with the Team Aquagrunt, but we can immediately then challenge Roxanne. Now, Trico does have Absorb, but Bullet Seed is better. Unfortunately, we're still pretty low level, and Geodude can just crit and knock me out. Absorb can also crit, though, and it knocked it out, and immediately I grow to level 10, which is pretty cool. We can then knock out the second Geodude fairly quickly, but the bigger problem is Nose Pass. Nose Pass is bulky. Unlike Geodude, its special defense isn't garbage, and it doesn't have that ground type giving us a double weakness, and so it looks like we're in trouble. Except we're not in as much trouble as you might think. While I do believe Emerald is overall going to be tougher, at the same time there are more mandatory trainers, and there is one mandatory hiker, this one on the right, on Route 116. The other hiker and the youngster, they're what we call spinners, they erratically will change their position, and you can avoid them, although it's difficult. This hiker, however, just stands still and always looks left, and there is no way of getting by both the youngster and the hiker, and since the hiker has rock Pokemon, it makes more sense to battle him. By battling him first, Trico is able to easily level up all the way to level 10, which will make the Roxanne fight a little easier. However, I should note that this is the last mandatory battle before Roxanne. There are no other trainers we actually have to battle, and thus, if Trico can't beat Roxanne here, the run would be over, but I really doubt that. Okay, so we should one-shot Roxanne with Bullet Seed or with Absorb, and you can see we easily do, and we level up to level 11. We don't need Quick Attack right now, but it will be a useful move later. Priority is always helpful, especially when experience points are limited. We can use Bullet Seed again and knock out Geodude, and this time we're all the way at level 12. And since we're modest nature, we do have very good special attack. Enough that we could have maybe one-shot Nose Pass, but we didn't. It uses its Orin Berry. We get a lucky crit, but only a two-turn. Unfortunately, Bullet Seed, because it can last between two and five turns, it's pretty luck-based. But if we get good enough luck, and especially if Nose Pass doesn't use Rock Tomb, we should be fine. Of course, it does use Rock Tomb and gets a crit. But, you know, eventually it won't. As I battle Roxanne again, I think it's a good time to clarify a couple things. First of all, when we lose, we have to reset. Because if we reset, the battle didn't really happen. This isn't some sort of Nuzlocke run. We're just trying to look theoretically what it would take. No one is saying this is going to be super consistent and I myself had never tried this before. We've now made it back to Nose Pass, and you can see I've equipped Orin Berry, which should have helped, but unfortunately it got a crit last time. Now, if Nose Pass gets my HP low enough, our Overgrow ability will trigger, and our Grass moves will be boosted by 50%. That actually doesn't happen, but we still get pretty lucky with Bullet Seed, and at level 13, I defeat Roxanne, and we can move on to the rest of the game. Before we do, I should mention something kind of interesting. I skipped the battle in Rusturf Tunnel, you'll have to forgive me, it was pretty easy. But these twins are a different type of double battle. And you can see the difference between tag up trainers and regular double battle trainers like in Ruby and Sapphire. These trainers, we actually have to deposit Meryl because they actually cannot battle us if we only have one Pokemon. Another interesting note is that these trainers like Tate and Liza their team is just one team, while with tag-up trainers, the strategy 
is to knock out one of the trainer's Pokemon first and turn the battle into a two-on-one. There aren't that many difficult tag-up battles in this game, but when else am I going to talk about this? Now, I don't want to battle Brawly yet, because we actually have to battle a couple of Team Aqua Grunts in the museum. They cannot be battled at the same time. You battle them one after another in single battles. So that's going to bring our total battle counter up to 10. And now I can finally show you for real, well, not really, I'm not going to show much of it, the double battle with Plusle and Minin. This is actually the first battle where I'm going to use Meryl. And to this point, I haven't found Meryl to be all that useful. But like we said, it is in the fast level up group. So it is going to gain a bunch of levels, which is super useful because there are only two mandatory battles left. Well, it's really a choice of one or the other. There's Brawly, who we can skip indefinitely until we need to defeat the Elite Four, but obviously we won't skip him for that long, or one of the most notoriously difficult rival fights in speedrunning, May 2. Unsurprisingly, I thought Brawly would be a little easier, so I battle Brawly first. But as you can see, even with giving all the experience points I could, well, other than knocking out Meryl to Grovile, we're still having a very tough time versus just Machop. And there are two other Pokemon. We still don't really have a better move than Bullet Seed, and this is obviously annoying because we simply do not know how much damage we're going to do in any given turn. And while it looks like I'm going to knock out Machop here, I'm actually not. I can use Absorb to gain back some HP, although that did take away my Overgrow, so that's not great. But you can see it come back into play as I knock out Machop, and I level up. Pursuit won't really be that useful, and Metatite, speaking of things that aren't very useful, Metatite can't really do all that much to me. In fact, I'm going to go for Absorb and try to get it to heal, because if I... Ah, I just missed. If I could get it to heal, then we'd have a much easier time versus Makuhita. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out, but let's talk a little bit about Metatite as I battle Brawly again. You see... Metatite, for some reason, always goes for Focus Punch. This move is 150 base power. However, it only lands if you're not attacked. And since I know it's going to go for Focus Punch, I can use that to my advantage. So we're just going to sit here and try and knock out Machop. Just like last time, there is a lot of RNG. What Machop is going to use, how many times we hit with Bullet Seed, and we got a 5 plus a 4, which is exceptionally lucky. And that means even if we don't get the perfect damage output, which I'm trying to get here, because I would like Metatite to heal, part of that also is to waste potions. Metatite isn't very good, Makuhita is very good, and there we go. I'm pretty sure Brawly has two super potions, so we will try to get the range again. It looks like we can just use Absorb, and we're not going to knock out Metatite, but will Brawly... Yeah, okay, that's perfect. So this is a great way, if you want to beat a difficult gym leader, one of the things that make them so tough are all the items they can use when you can't. So forcing them to waste those items on useless Pokemon, that's a good strat. Anyway, we just need good luck versus Makuhita. Thankfully, it has very bad special defense. Going for bulk up is a bit of a not great thing. And Vital Throw nearly knocks me out. Citrus Berry gives it 30 HP, but with Overgrow, and a crit, we're able to knock out Makuhita. It only took us about three times to defeat Brawly, which isn't so bad. And after 12 battles, we're about to face our toughest test yet, May 2. Now, I probably should have picked May for a reason that I'll talk about in just a second. Well, I can talk about it now. She leads with Wingle. And you see, the thing is, if it were Brendan, for whatever reason, oh, that knocked it out. It wouldn't be Wingle, which is kind of strange, but whatever. Combuskin now comes out and uses Ember. While we are in Overgrow range, I mean, that's just simply not going to work. So what am I going to do here? By the way, the reason I said I should have picked May is that Lombre will come out first and that would give us more experience points. But I'm going to tell you what I should do here. Give up? Yeah, <laughs> I battled May. For over an hour. And guess what, guys? We didn't win a single time. Not once. Because at the end of the day, Grovile kind of sucks. I mean, the biggest issue with Grovile is its move pool. 
it doesn't get something like Mega Drain or Leaf Blade till very, very late. And if you thought May 2 was going to be tough, I don't think there's any way I could have beat Watson. Maybe I could have leveled up Meryl a bit more, gone into Azumarill. Looking back, that might have been helpful, but that means we probably wouldn't have beaten Brawly. I mean, we just barely beat Brawly with our fully evolved Grovile. Could we really have done that with just a Trico? And would one level have made a huge difference? Maybe we could main with Azumarill, but what would it have used? I think at the end of the day, as much as I love Trico, it was really obvious it just wasn't going to cut it. Sure, against Juan and Wallace, it would have been useful, but I battled May again and again and again. I never, ever knocked out Combusket. And I have a bit of a rule in terms of lucky battles. If I battle for an hour, and I never even come a move or two away from winning. So like, imagine we got to the final Pokemon, which again, I believe is Lombre. And we just, if one thing went differently, we would win. Sure. But we never got that far, because at the end of the day, we have nothing for Combusken. We can't really make Combusken's moves miss. Meryl is just too weak to really do anything. It just, it didn't work at all. And rather than spend two, three hours maybe trying to hope for some miracle number of critical hits and bad AI, I decided to move on. And, well, if May's gonna beat me with Torchic, you know what? I can use Torchic too. Now, I had to reset until I got a good Torchic, but then I had to decide what I was gonna use to complement Torchic. And unlike Trico and Mudkip, Torchic has a terrible terrible time against Roxanne and so I need something that can use all the HMs and can beat Roxanne who did I decide to catch it's Lotad Lotad has both the water and grass typing and complements Torchic really well bullet seed I still do have to rely on it but three hits knocks out Geodude number one three hits knocks out Geodude number two and now I just have to deal with Nose Pass. I actually didn't expect to win this battle, but surprisingly, I actually will end up winning with a four hit Bullet Seed. I actually forgot to equip the Orin Berry, so kind of lucky, but I will take it. That's one gym badge down. I tried to battle Brawly next, but it wasn't really working out for me. The big reason is that Torchic just isn't strong enough. I mean, if we were at level 16, it would be great. We would have a Combusken then, but after trying a couple times, it was just clear Torchic could not take on Machop. And while Lombre is evolved, it's still a Lombre, and it doesn't have really any great moves yet. So I think I have to try Rival 2, and we know how that went last time. Well, something weird happens. It starts out as Torchic versus Lombre, May's Lombre, and then I switch to Lombre, and May switches to Marshtomp. Now, Marshtomp goes for Bide. I get a 5 turn, and then only a single Bullet Seed. So Lombre's actually leveled up twice. Slugma, I have Nature Power, which turns into Swift. Unfortunately, Slugma tries to put me to sleep, so I swap in Torchic. And after it uses Rock Throw, I go for Swift again. Then I gotta do this Switch Dance once again. Can't have any of my Pokemon sleeping. Seems like anytime Torchic comes out, it's going to use Rock Throw. I get a critical hit, and now it's Lombre versus Lombre. Don't forget, though, once I beat May 2, and it seems like it's pretty clear I'm going to beat May 2, I actually don't need to worry about Brawly. Why? Because we can just advance to the next part of the game. And thanks to poor AI move decisions, that's exactly what's going to happen. We've leveled up to level 16, and we have defeated May 2 for the very, very first time, giving us access to Marvel City, a couple trainers, but more importantly, both Lombre and Combusken at level 16. I did try to battle Brawly again, it didn't work, but like I said, there are more trainers to battle, including these two. Once again, both are mandatory, and thus, by having Lombre, we are now minus one in battles. By which I mean that if I didn't have Lombre, it would have taken four battles to beat these trainers.
But because I caught Lombre, although it was an extra battle originally, I've only used three battles total, which is what you want in a minimum battles challenge. Now, other than these two trainers, there are only three more mandatory battles. One of them I actually forgot about. We'll talk about that a little bit later. On that note, it might shock you to learn there's only one trainer in Watson's gym that's mandatory. This youngster up here with the Zigzagoon and Gulpin. None of the other trainers, which are tag battles, they're not mandatory. You can take a very specific route. Kind of cool. I did try to battle Watson. It went unbelievably poorly, like a lot more poorly than you would expect. Voltorb knows Shockwave and Self-Destruct. And while Lombre isn't weak to electric attacks, it can't really do all that much to these Pokemon. You see, splitting experience really helped for May, but it's not being very helpful versus Watson. And yeah, let's go battle Brawly first. As it turns out, Brawly is actually pretty difficult, even at level 16. Peck does less damage than Double Kick, and thankfully it is a range to knock out Machop. Now the next thing we need to do is what we've talked about before. We need to damage Metatite such that Brawly uses both Super Potions, because the most dangerous Pokemon on Brawly's team is, of course, Makuhita. Makuhita has Thick Fat, so I have to use Double Kick. And it has bulk up, which lowers the damage Double Kick does. Once Combuscan faints, it's normally over. However, there is a slim chance Lombre can get a critical hit, and that's what ended up happening. Unfortunately, Combuscan is the Pokemon I'm gonna need to beat Watson, so having Lombre gain experience points isn't great, but I spent roughly 10 minutes trying to beat Brawly. So I wasn't going to reset the battle because my experience points weren't everything I'd hoped they'd be. By the way, because I reset so much, it would turn out I actually forgot to save after I beat the trainer in Watson's gym, which could have helped me versus Brawly, but whatever, we won anyway. Speaking of anyway, this battle went, honestly, it just went terribly, to be quite honest with you. I mean, I try to go for bulk up, and that really just didn't work. Unfortunately, the thing is, Spark in this game, it's not a physical attack. It's a special attack. And that's a bit of an issue. Our special defense isn't great. And while we do knock out Voltorb, Electrike knocks out my Combuskin. I can knock out Electrike, but Lombre can do next to nothing against a Magneton. Nature Power can turn into Earthquake under the right conditions, but not in a gym. And it's at this time the run entered what I like to call the Watson Gauntlet. Watson was unbelievably difficult, to the point where I really did think of giving up. We talked about this when it came to Trico and May. If we get runs where we're getting close, where if just a couple things went a little differently we would have won, well that shows what I call a pathway to victory. But we weren't getting close versus Watson, I tried to use both my Pokemon using Lombre versus Electrike, Combuskin versus the rest of them. I wasn't making any progress whatsoever. Before I give up though, I try absolutely everything. I tried leading off with Lombre. Maybe Lombre could knock out or at least do a little bit of damage to Voltorb. It seemed to not be of much use and if anything, just getting rid of Voltorb seems to be the one thing that's holding me back. So, I do get rid of Voltorb, but I'm only at 16 HP after level up. Well, 26 after Orenberry. I do knock out Electrike, so that's a good thing. Unfortunately, Magneton outspeeds Combuskin. Yeah, Blaziken really only was fast after it got speed boost as a hidden ability. Combuskin, its pre evolved form, is pretty slow. Guys, I kept battling Watson over and over and over again, and I was just trying everything. Eventually, I'm like, uh, maybe swap in Lombre here. And then it happened. The pathway opened up. The only problem is I doubt it would use self-destruct on full health. We damaged it this time, but at least maybe there's a pathway forward. We did get a bulk up, but here's another problem. Double kick hits twice with contact, and each hit is a 30% chance static activates, which paralyzes us. And because we weren't at full HP, 
not because we were paralyzed to be honest we did a lot of damage to magneton but we're gonna need to get up two bulk ups to knock it out now this is the closest i've gotten yet but i can't really feel all that happy i mean unless it goes for self-destruct at full eight what okay okay i have a strategy I'm still going to lead with Combuskin because I really do need more levels, but I'm going to switch in Lombre. According to someone in my chat, it's a 6% chance on the first turn Voltorb goes for self-destruct. It's not great odds, but it's what we need. After only like four more attempts, it happened. We swapped a Lombre, self-destruct. Combuskin gets full experience, levels up to level 19, full HP. Unfortunately, Electrite goes for Shockwave, but then Howl. We probably need to go for Howl twice. But we do knock it out with Double Kick. Now Magneton goes for Shockwave, and we survive on 1 HP. That's good, but there's a problem. Manectric knows Quick Attack. And in Generation 3, if the AI can knock you out with Quick Attack, it will always, without exception, go for Quick Attack. That means... We need just enough HP, which is more than you'd think, that Manectric will not go for Quick Attack. And the only way that happens is if Electrike uses Howl twice. So, as you watch me resetting over and over again, here are the crazy list of circumstances that we need to happen. We need Voltorb to use Self-Destruct on turn one. That's not likely. Then, we need Electrike to go for Howl, not once, but twice. Unfortunately, with 6% odds, it took a very long time to get another self-destruct, but I did discover something. We don't actually need a first turn self-destruct. We need a first or second turn self-destruct. That still works. But now we need two Howls. We get Howl turn one, we go for bulk up. We get Howl turn two. We have Quick Claw, which I went back to Rustboro City we do get paralyzed, but we're at full health. We don't get the Quick Law activating. We do knock out Magneton, and we should survive Quick Attack. We actually don't even get it. Quick Claw cannot out-priority Quick Attack. But we don't knock out Manectric, and even though it can go for Howl, instead, it went for Shockwave. But remember what I said. If you're just a move or two away from victory, if something happened a little differently, and what could have happened differently? Quick Claw could have activated versus Magneton or a critical hit versus Manectric. Yes, it's a crazy amount of luck we need from the self-destruct to the two howls to at least one Quick Claw and maybe a crit, but we're close. And that means this is doable. Now, the fact that the 6% luck chance comes right at the beginning is both a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because at the very least, it's quick to reset runs. Oh, by the way, if you get really good luck with Bullet Seed, you actually don't even need the self-destruct. So it's not just 6%. The problem is the luck doesn't even start to end there. We need a Quick Claw, which we get once again. So... Once again, Electrike doesn't attack us, but then this happens. That is the face of someone who did not expect that result. And we're hit with Sonic Boom. Now, this double kick's gonna knock it out, but no longer can we survive both a shock. Oh, well, we survived Shockwave, but we weren't gonna survive Shockwave Quick Attack. And unfortunately, because we were paralyzed, we didn't attack. So lots of bad things happening at the end. But hey, that's twice making it to Manectric. That's progress, I guess. I don't want to overstate, though, just how much luck is involved. Remember, last time we got past Voltorb, we needed Quick Claw. We don't naturally outspeed Voltorb. In fact, Quick Claw helps so much. I mean, we otherwise need not two, but three Howls, because otherwise, actually, we got three. Electrike can just attack us. And then Magneton, if we don't get Quick Claw, it's fine, we won, yay, but it's not actually fine. We get knocked out by Manectric. Boo. So even when it looks like a battle's going good, it goes bad very, very fast. 
And the luck we need against Manectric itself, well, it's pretty absurd to be honest, but doable. All we can do is just try again and again and again and again. And by the way, I do make small adjustments like using Absorb and an Orinberry, which gives Lombre one more hit, potentially. Just one more chance at getting a run started, and hey, 20% Quick Claw chance, let's go. Next, we have the Howl Gauntlet. We need three of them, or two plus a Quick Claw. And you can see me pausing here. I'm actually doing damage calculations. Don't like doing them in Nuzlocke? No problem in a Minimum Battles Challenge. But what was I calculating? Well, notice I use a third and then a fourth and then a fifth bulk up. Electrike goes for Leer because I'm raising my defense. It goes for Shockwave, but if I get decent luck with Quick Claw, we're going to win. Why? Oh my God, Supersonic missed. It didn't attack. I think we won. I don't think Shockwave knocks us out. It doesn't even use it. Yes! <laughs> Oh my gosh. So, yeah. Sorry I had to show you before I told you, but we had a pretty good chance with five bulk ups of one shotting Manectric. Why rely on a critical hit when we can rely on awful AI? You might take Jero's out of Generation 1, but you'll never take Generation 1 strategies out of Jero's. Janky, terrible AI? You bet I'm going to exploit that. And once I realized that Electrite could sometimes just go for Howl indefinitely, I didn't know it'd go for Leer. That was new information. And I think what the AI was trying to do was go for enough Howls until Quick Attack would knock me out. And because Bulk Up was both raising my attack and defense, it wasn't able to ever hit that threshold, which is why I think it started going for Leer. I'm just speculating. I just wanted to keep going for Howl. But that worked. We got some good luck for sure. I mean, supersonic miss and then thunder wave. But after resetting for over an hour, I finally make it past Watson and can make it through to the next part of the game. This involves first going to Fall Arbor Town and chasing down Team Magma until you climb up Mount Chimney. And atop Mount Chimney, we get our third mandatory unskippable tag team battle which brings us to a grand total of two battles that lombre saves us at minimum i say that because again we'll talk about in a second uh these battles aren't too difficult there's also a mandatory hiker on route 114. so many trainers you might think they're all mandatory no even the cool trainer with rosilia which is mandatory in ruby sapphire is actually skippable in emerald so this is a big reason these games are very difficult, just so few mandatory battles. Anyway, skipping a battle ahead, we're going to battle Maxi. Now Maxi can be unbelievably tough in these runs, but with two Pokemon instead of one, I can lead with Lombre and thus avoid my Combuskin getting its attack lowered. In fact, I can raise its attack with Bulk Up and easily knock out the Mighty Yenna. Camera Up comes out next. Unfortunately, I'm not able to do enough damage and it does no magnitude. So this battle might be difficult unless I'm able to one-shot camera. Thankfully, it's very slow, but then I have to knock out a Zubat with two Pokemon that are weak to flying. So yeah, Winona might be a big deal, but that's a problem for future Jeros. Current Jeros has Maxi to defeat, and we're still gonna have Lombre lead. Unfortunately, we don't actually have full HP. We do, however, have Rock Smash which I wanted to lower Mighty Anna's defense, but that didn't really work out. Well, now we have Zubat, and thanks to a crit, a single cut after a bulk up knocks it out, and for whatever reason, camera up doesn't go for magnitude, it goes for tackle. And that means even after Intimidate, unless we get flinched, which we don't, we should be able to one-shot Mighty Anna. Well, that doesn't happen, but thankfully, I think I've gotten it in a super potion loop, where I'm slowly, slowly going to lower its HP, or I'll get a crit. So that helps even more. Although crits are two times and double kick does, I don't think identical damage, but around identical two times. So I think the crit didn't matter. Either way, that is 21 battles down, but don't relax yet. There's only five mandatory battles remaining 
in this section of the game. Flannery, the three trainers in Norman's gym, and then Norman. So we're not going to get very much experience, and we're going to have some super tough Pokemon to face. Is our underleveled Combusken and Lombre up to the task? Well, it should be R. That would be proper grammar. So hopefully my battling is better than my grammar. Now, you might notice that the gym leaders in this game are a little better. They all have more Pokemon. And Flannery leads with Nummel. So it goes for Sunny Day. I'm just going to keep going for bulk ups until I have to stop. After a magnitude 7, I have to stop. And I knock out Nummel. Thankfully, all of Flannery's Pokemon are pretty slow. And I'm fire type, so I don't have to worry about burns. We knock out Slugma. We actually knock out Camerup. But Torkoal, on the other hand, not even half. And Overheat knocks me out. Lombre does not have a water move. I wish it did. And Swift did, <laughs> like, 1 HP. So it's going to have to be Combusken all the way, unfortunately. Speaking of unfortunately... It didn't look like Flannery was going to be a significant drop of difficulty from Watson. I mean, again, she has two ground Pokemon with ground moves. And we need to set up a ton of bulk ups if we're going to want to one-shot Torkoal. And because she likes to set up Sun and use Overheat, us using bulk up, actually even Camerupt, can use Overheat. And our bulk ups do nothing. The resistance does nothing. So... This is going to be a super, super tough battle. Now, there is a chance that Takedown can miss. And if we just use one bulk up, we can actually get Flannery to heal. And that means we can set up a free second bulk up, which auto knocks out Nummel. Now, we also probably want to get her to use her other Hyper Potion before Torkoal. And making it to Torkoal for the record, that's pretty easy. It's doing anything against Torkoal. I mean... That was, oh, we actually survived. But then we get paralyzed and get knocked out. Don't forget, we can't lower any of Torkoal's stats. It has white smoke. And honestly, I don't even know who to set up against. Now, let me not over-exaggerate. This battle is probably going to be difficult, but it's not going to be anywhere near as difficult as Watson. I just have to kind of battle a whole bunch of times, figure out what Flannery wants to do, and then develop a strategy that will, just like against Watson, allow me to knock out Torkoal ASAP because that Pokemon we really can't do anything against. And once it attacks me, it's pretty much game over. Well, after 10 minutes of non-stop battling, I had a bit of a plan. I led with Bulk Up, Sunny Day, not what I want to see, but that's okay. So I use a second Bulk Up, get hit with Takedown, that's fine. Just knock out Nummel with Double Kick. Yes, my plans actually do have contingencies, and you'll see that I am leveling up Lombre with experience share. I'll explain that in just a second. Now I'm going to bulk up versus Slugma, and I have the Petcha Berry for poison. Now Slugma's AI likes to go for Smog, Light Screen, and that's the fifth turn of Sun. Sun is down, so we get Sunny Day. Now there is a chance for Overheat, but I do have to risk it, and we get Smog, no Poison, we can knock it out with double kick. Now with plus six, I'm going to go for dig. For whatever reason, Camera prefers to go for overheat, which misses, and we knock it out with dig. The real reason, though, I went for dig is because now Torkoal's AI is going to want to... No, why did I go for dig? That was a misclick. That ruined everything. No, I knew I wasn't going to one shot. I was just turning it into a consistent two shot potential one shot. Didn't have to worry about... Ugh, come on. Anyway, you can see the strat. Now I just have to do it. And to be fair, I think five bulk ups would be fine. I just wasn't exactly sure. I hadn't actually made it this far. And I just kind of put this all together. All right. So let's try that again. We're going to go for bulk up on turn one. Sunny day is fine. We go for a second bulk up. It goes for takedown. That's fine. We knock it out with double kick. Same as last time. Now we've got our slugma. Third bulk up, smog, no Petra Berry, it's fine. Fourth, smog misses, that's fine. Fifth, we're going to get probably light screen. Six, we get sunny day. Now that's fine. We can go for dig and waste an extra turn, knock out slugma. Now I know if I go for dig, the sun's going to run out against camera up, but I have a bit of a clever strategy I'm going to try. I'm going to go for double kick 
and then against Torkoal, I'm going to go for Dig, and the Sun's going to run out, so it goes for Body Slam, does nothing, there's the Hyper Potion, and the Reliable 2 a KO, I probably did need all six of those bulk ups, and I love it when a plan comes together, that went about as well as I could hope. Not a lot of luck needed per se. Sometimes it's just a matter of battling again and again, figuring out what the AI wants to do, and then using that against them. It's what I love about Pokemon. It's why I don't like Pokemon ROM hacks per se. Who needs that? Just create your own challenges and try to take this game apart. These games are fantastic and a huge part of my childhood, and it gives me a ton of joy to try and see them in very different ways. And nothing is more different than minimum battles, something that... I just made up one day and now a bunch of other people do which is crazy but you know what else is crazy me thinking I would beat Norman yeah so I made like a really 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 big mistake and we'll talk about that in just a second first off there are three mandatory trainers in Norman's gym the only way to get through the doors are to be trainers and they all have one Pokemon so I obviously picked the Pokemon with the absolute most experience points who wouldn't do that but now we're going to go battle Norman. Oh, wait, wait. Sorry, AJ. I'm going to actually have to go back in the past because if I don't, people will say, what happened here? So in Lava Ridge Town, you can talk to this lady and get a Why Not Egg. I did that before Flannery's Battle. You might have noticed it. And then on Route 111 in Emerald, you can get a fossil. We got the Claw Fossil and we can revive that in Rustboro and get Anorith, giving us four of the five Pokemon we're going to have at the end of the game. That's right, there's only one more joining our team. All right, with all of that out of the way, now let's battle Norman. Remember I just said I made a mistake? Well, yeah, Norman leads with Spinda, and Spinda knows Psybeam. And Psybeam nearly two shots Combusken, who, if you recall, is a slow Pokemon. And that's not a good sign. So, let me explain what I've been doing and why that was not the best idea. Lombre is going to be pretty important for the next gyms, so I wanted to give it some more experience points. However, it's absolutely useless versus Norman, and all those experience points could have been going to Combusken, which might need them. So, I have made this needlessly more difficult, and if that's how these battles are going to go, I might be 0 for 2 on non-Mudkip starters, but I'm not willing to give up so quickly. Now, there is something we can use to our advantage. Bad AI. I don't know why this is a thing, but Spinda loves to go for Teeter Dance, and it will go for Teeter Dance twice, even though you're already confused. There is a bug in Norman's AI. Now, assuming you don't hit yourself in confusion, Hopefully you set up another bulk up, which makes it easier to survive against Vigoroth, knock it out. We also can just barely survive against the level 29 Lanoon, knock it out, and now we have Slacking, and we have Dig. So what we can do is send in Why Not, have it faint, and now we can just go for Dig. And everything is going to be great, because Slacking can only attack every second turn. And yeah, we can go for double kick, switch in Anorith. We can switch in Lombre. Let's try and actually, oh, I didn't mean to go for fake out. Let's go for rock smash. Okay, I kind of wanted to lower its defense because yeah, this is actually not going to work. So let me explain to you why it wasn't going to work. Norman has one other hyper potion and Dig has 10 power points. If we don't lower slacking's defense in any way well then there's no way we'll have enough power points and we'll eventually have to knock it out i was hoping for two crits it didn't happen but hey hey we made it to slacking surely this battle won't take us like three hours or something that would that would be ridiculous that's definitely not what exactly happened <laughs> all right it's been an hour and a half what have i learned well kind of nothing i mean what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hope for Teeter Dance, go for Bulk Up, and then hope for Quick Law not hitting myself in confusion. Great. Now what? Now we get Vigoroth. We're going to go for Double Kick. Great. A Quick Claw actually doesn't matter here. 
Now, Norman's gonna heal, which we need him to do here. We're gonna go for bulk up and hope for another quick claw. We get that. Excellent. That one, not as important, but kind of important. Because now we have Lanoon. Lanoon is gonna go for either Belly Drum, Headbutt, or Facade. We don't wanna see Headbutt. We get it, we don't flinch. And we get a crit, which is fine. Now, Slacking is just gonna be able to knock us out. So we have to swap. We swap into Why Not, Slacking knocks us out. Now, here's what we need. We need Aneroth to get a defense drop with Rock Smash. It does, that's great. Now it gets knocked out. Next comes out Lombre. It doesn't get the defense drop. So we lose. I mean, if we got two crits, we'd win, but we lose. There's nothing we could do. Dig simply won't do enough damage. And there's another problem here. Because we have Quick Claw, we actually can't rely on Dig because out of every five turns, on average, one of them we're gonna go first. And most of the time that happens, it would mean we get knocked out by slacking. So yeah, 90 minutes in, we're on the last Pokemon, but we still need quite a lot of luck just to get there. And I still don't really know how I'm gonna knock it out. All I can do is battle again and again and again and again. Remember, I need to not hit myself in confusion, which is very unlikely. I also need to go for two teeter dances, which is very unlikely. And I need at least one quick law activation unless we get perfect luck because I need enough HP to survive both an attack by Vigoroth and potentially an attack by Lanoon. So, you know, I make it to slacking one out of every like 30 battles. At some point, you're probably wondering, what can you even do? What strategies are left? Well, it took me a really long time to figure this out, but take a look at this. It took me 45 hours to try and use this new strategy, but it might work. Now, the beginning is the exact same, which is why it took me so long. We need to get the double teeter dance, and you can see my expression. Finally, we got past Spinda. Took me a long time. We also bought some vitamins. Now, I don't get hit myself in confusion. We get the hyper potion here, which is exactly what we want. We need to use one up. We snap out of confusion, which is good. And we get hit by facade, but we might have just enough HP to survive against Lanoon. It goes for belly drum, which is perfect. Again, you can see I'm pretty excited because it's time for my new strategy. So first things first, we're gonna have to swap in why not. It gets knocked out. Next comes out Anorith. What's Anorith gonna do? It's gonna go for swagger. Swagger is a move tutorable move and it didn't hit itself in confusion, but that's okay because now we're going to go for HM5 Flash. Slacking can also occasionally use counter. And so between that and using Flash and hitting itself in confusion, we are hopefully going to win. Eventually, I'm going to start using Rock Smash with the hope of lowering its defense. I am not thinking that Lombre is gonna knock out Slacking. I mean, of course it's not. But if I lower its defense enough, then hopefully when Combuskin comes in, it can do enough damage to just knock it out without it using its Hyper Potion. Finally, Lombre is knocked out, and this is the moment of truth. I don't know if Double Kick will knock it out, and then it could use a Hyper Potion. I'm gonna do something risky. I'm gonna go for overheat. This shouldn't put it in healing range, it doesn't. And it misses. We just won. <laughs> Guys, three and a half hours. Three and a half hours. You can see chat, you can see me. This had taken between two streams. It was horrible. When you consider the fact that I speed up the game by three times, this is probably the longest I've ever spent on a battle because Scarlet Violet are only one times. But when you factor that in, pretty sure this was the longest ever. I severely misjudged both how difficult Norman would be and the type of strategy I would need to defeat him. But thankfully, 
the very first attempt I tried with this new strategy, although it took me like half an hour to get there, I was able to win. And that feels good. But it gets even better. Now that I've defeated Norman, we get access to Surf, both as an attack and as a way to surf on water, opening up a large, large portion of the game, including the second half of the game, where there are many mandatory trainers that aren't gym leaders, and that gives my underleveled Pokemon finally a chance to level up and maybe even evolve into Blaziken, and if I find a Waterstone along the way, a Ludicolo. Now, I've hinted at this battle before, but I didn't realize this battle was mandatory. This youngster and Aroma Lady would have given me a ton of experience points and could have helped maybe not so much against Norman, but a ton against Watson. So I'm really upset I didn't realize these guys were here. Could have saved me like half an hour or something, maybe, I don't know. I know that if we ever do this again. Hopefully we never do this again. But if I do, now we know they're here and they're mandatory. However, this doesn't count towards the catch a Pokemon early negative battle count because you could theoretically do this later, in which case you would have Anorith, why not, as you can see. Anyway, I don't really have much to talk about at this point. There are three mandatory battles in the Weather Institute, including another tag team battle. None of them are particularly difficult. May, the opposite of Nimona, because you only have to battle her three times. Well, this battle's actually really easy. We actually can lead with Combuskin, and even though her first Pokemon is Lombre, it really can't do much to me, just like my Lombre can't do all that much. It doesn't have Surf, though. We do. So, you can see that I'm leveling up Why Not. If you watch the Ruby and Sapphire minimum battles, you know why. But if you haven't, you're in for a treat. Anyway, when Marshtomp comes in, I'm still using Bullet Seed, which at this point is laughably underpowered, but that's okay. We're gonna get knocked out. We do outspeed Marshtomp, even though we're underleveled. And even though I would want Lombre to level up a bit more, it's fine. Combuskin can take the experience points. Slugma can do next to nothing to me. And we can just knock it out eventually with double kick. And that is 31 battles. Now, Winona is the next gym leader, but she's a flying type gym leader. And I'm using a grass and fire Pokemon. So I'm going to skip her for now and instead go to Mount Pyre, the next place with mandatory battles. There's just three battles with grunts. I mean, the final one is a tag team battle, but nothing really interesting here, just some more experience points. What is kind of interesting but more annoying is that because I picked Combuskin and my secondary Pokemon is Lombre, I don't have a Pokemon that can use Fly. Mind you, I would need to defeat Winona to use Fly, but I have to backtrack all the way to Mount Chimney in order to enter the Emerald Exclusive Magma Hideout, where there actually are a lot of extra battles. And this is part of the reason I wasn't too concerned with leveling up Lombre. I knew there were a lot of extra experience points in the game, and having Lombre as another viable Pokemon could only help, especially later in the game. And when I say extra battles, I mean extra battles. Guys, we're at Battle 41, and we haven't even battled Maxi yet. That makes it eight additional battles in the Magma Hideout. Now, Maxi... Maxi's gonna be difficult. You can see Lombre's only level 26, and Combuskin's only level 30. So, we have quite a level disadvantage. And that's not going to work really well. But I can show you the backup strat, Wobbuffet. It has Quick Claw, and it knows Destiny Bond. And we got to take down Mist, not Quick Claw. And we can just spam Destiny Bond until Mighty Anna hits. And look at that. Anytime there's a Pokemon that's too difficult to knock out, just use Wobbuffet with Quick Claw. It's a 20% chance at an auto knockout. Pretty cheap. Pretty awesome. Unfortunately, the rest of this battle didn't go very awesome, so I need to figure out a strategy because Maxi's going to be quite tough. This isn't quite when you're meant to battle her, and we are hilariously under level. Now, it took me like 15 minutes, but I did figure out a strategy that looked kind of viable. I led with Anorith. I know, Anorith. And I'm just going to try to use Rock Smash 
just to try to lower Mighty Anna's defense as much as possible so Combusking can knock it out. Now, I got really good luck and actually did way more damage than I was anticipating, enough that I actually got Maxi to use one of her super potions. Now, I'm going to set up Bulk Up, that's also to defend against Crobat's attacks, and Mighty Anna uses Swagger. I'm expecting this. I have a Person Berry. Of course, Mighty Anna misses, so I can set up a second Bulk Up. And Mighty Anna misses again, so I can set up a third Bulk Up. And Mighty Anna misses again, so I can set up a fourth Bulk Up. This time Mighty Anna actually hits, so that's the fourth Bulk Up. And now we're going to go for Double Kick, and look at that. I actually knew it was a speed tie, and finally we win it. We knock out Mighty Enna. We're not confused. Double Kick does enough to knock out Camera Up. By the way, this wasn't the strategy whatsoever. Now we actually will survive a wing attack by Crobat. Use Strength, which almost knocks out Crobat. It uses a Super Potion, and we win. Now, let me be clear, this wasn't the strat. The strat was to knock out Camera Up by any means possible, lose to Crobat, and then hope for Quick Claw, Wobbuffet, Destiny Bond, and that would have worked. It might have taken another five minutes or so, but that definitely would have worked. Of course, this worked a heck of a lot better, so I will definitely take that. And at this point, I kind of want to see how Winona's going to go. There are only two mandatory trainer battles in her gym, including another tag team battle, but those were pretty easy. And let's see how Winona's going to go. I don't think she's going to be a very easy battle at all. I haven't even healed. We have Lombre at level 29, and our Ice Beam isn't even doing half, which is fine. We don't have to battle Swablu right here, and honestly, probably we need it to be a Ludicolo. Thankfully, Swablu doesn't go for Aerial Ace right away, and we do actually survive, but then out comes Pelipper, and I realize, oh yeah, what the heck am I going to do against a Pelipper? I try to go for Destiny Bond because that's what I actually should do. Pelipper confuses me, and so if it knocks me out, we could theoretically make it by Pelipper, but you know, what's the point? We're going to need Ludicolo, definitely. We're going to want to level up. There are a lot more trainers to battle. Let's battle those first. Unfortunately, by going back to Fortree, I have to backtrack to Slateport, and then have to go all the way back to Lily Cove, which I've already been to. So lots of backtracking, fun times. We then can battle three grunts, well, two grunts and admin Matt. And thankfully, Matt isn't nearly as difficult as Maxi was. He is similar Pokemon, but they're just not as strong. And because of that, we are, well, we're not able to win on our first attempt, but we're eventually able to win, trust me. Now that we've defeated Matt, we can surf to Moss Deep City. Now, I don't remember if these trainers were here in Ruby and Sapphire, but I don't remember a mandatory battle. Now, one of them is a spinner, and I try to sneak by or I don't, but the other guy saw me, and this is as far up as I can be, so at least he's going to be a mandatory battle. She won't be, and because she isn't, when a choice occurs, and I can either battle two or battle one, in the minimum battle, Spirit of the Rule, you always got to battle one. The same thing goes if there are two trainers and one is two Pokemon, the other one. Always got to go with less Pokemon, even though they're both just one battle. I've been doing this the whole way through, by the way, which is why I didn't battle that youngster all the way back when we were talking about Trico. Once we defeat him, we can finally, on Route 124, get a blue shard. I looked it up, and there is one on this route which can be traded for a water stone, which will give me Ludicolo, which will make this run a heck of a lot easier. But I'm having trouble finding it. So I'm just going to go and look on Bulbapedia and... No. No, I... I'm, I swear I didn't need die for it. Wait, 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 no. No, 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 no. I... I uh-oh. Uh okay. This is bad. Maybe very bad. W we'll come back to this, but... It seems like we're going to have to use Lombre versus Tate and Liza, but that's okay. I mean, Solrock, Lunatone, they're weak to Surf. And yeah, it's going to do 50%, but we have Wobbuffet, we should be fine. There are only two mandatory battles in the gym, and let's take our first look at Tate and Liza. They can be pretty difficult sometimes, but in the last run, they weren't that bad. Surely they won't be worse than Norman or Watson, right? 
So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lead with Lombre and Wobbuffet. I'm going to go for Surf and Destiny Bond hits. Ooh, Zatu went for Calm Mind. But, er oh, that did a lot. All right. Anyway, we knock out Claydol. And, okay, Lombre levels up. Now I have to switch in another Pokemon. I guess Cast Form makes sense. Try to set up Rain. Surf doesn't do a lot. Um, okay, let's go for Surf and set up Rain. Okay, it just knocked out my Lombre. And now it just knocked out Combusken. How is this going to happen? Um, we can try. I, 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 I don't have any ideas. But you know what? It's okay. I might be out of ideas, but I'm sure Streamer Jaros, he must know what to do. I mean, he's done so much so far. Streamer Jaros, what do you think? I think we're done. I, I can't even fathom what we would do here. Oh. Well, that's not great. After, like, one attempt. <laughs> yeah. So, thanks for watching this video. Um, this isn't a fake out. No, we're done. We're done. This is not possible. And I actually want to illustrate how not possible this is because I messed up, guys. I messed up big time. I, for some inexplicable reason, forgot two things. One, that we needed Waterstone, but I'm going to fix that. I'm actually going to hack in a Waterstone while I talk so you can see that it actually won't matter inexplicably i completely forgot about claydol and zatu i don't know how i play emerald way more than ruby and sapphire but i was thinking about those runs when i was making my strategy because it's what i knew and it was what i was basing this off of and i made some adjustments but i didn't adjust for spinda and i didn't adjust for zatu and claydol and i never do this i'm usually better than this but i wasn't i also use my rare candies by the way eventually i don't know if i'm going to show you that but it didn't matter. Again, this is hack. You cannot get a Ludicolo here. And that, I'm much more mad at myself about. That was me misreading Bulbapedia and thinking I didn't need Dive because the other ones say underwater. I'm like, oh, this one's fine. Because it technically isn't underwater, but I forgot you need Dive to access the part of the overworld where the blue shard is located and the one the abandoned ship also requires dive which means you need to beat tate and liza and as far as i'm aware there aren't any more mandatory battles and again we hacked in a water stone we, we hacked one in this is not a matter of exp this team wasn't good enough and honestly it makes me upset i didn't give up at watson i didn't give up at norman i played for four hours just trying to beat Norman, and it ends at Tate and Liza. And this is a different type of mistake from a Nuzlocke. You know, it's not a misclick or something like that. It just never really would work. And I don't mean theoretically. I'm sure in theory, by some magic of RNG, Lombre could win. But I don't want to play this game for two, three weeks, three years. I don't even know what combination of luck we would need. Because it's a double battle, and because my other Pokemon are utterly useless... I cannot imagine a scenario that we could just cheese this like we did for Norman. And frankly, why am I trying? I knew right off the bat Mudkip would be the best, but chat wanted me to try other starters, so I did, but it didn't work. So in our next video, we're going to try Mudkip. I can tell you right now, even with Mudkip, based on what we've seen, not going to be easy. We might even need to do multiple runs again. But hopefully, we will be able to do this challenge minimum battles in a way that I can be proud of. Not by using double team or something. We don't do that. No daycare. Nah. No hacking in things. No way. No, there's a way to do this. There's a way that's semi-consistent-ish. I mean, I say that after Ruby and Sapphire, but you get what I mean. I don't know when that video will be out, but hopefully it's soon. Because despite all this... I love this challenge, and I really want to see it through. Take care, everyone.